Hey guys, how's it going? Eric here. Today's video, I want to talk about my Instacon RF70 by Mint. It is a instant film camera that shoots the Instax wide film by Instax or Fujifilm. Um, this is just going to be a video of me uh, talking about the things that I like and I don't like. It's not a review or anything, it's just things that I've come to learn from owning this camera for about a year. And it's also going to be a video of me walking around downtown Dallas, uh, taking pictures and talking about uh, the JFK assassination. So if you like that, uh, you're in the right place. So real quick, <coughs> I'm not going to talk about the specs or any, anything like that. There's a lot of videos on YouTube that talk about it. I just want to talk about uh, some pros and cons. I'm mostly going to talk about a lot of bad things about it, but I think all the good things outweigh all the bad things. So first off, uh, one of the things I don't like about this camera is the lens. Uh, but before I talk about the lens, I want to talk about this. So this is the collapse mode. And in the collapse mode, to open it, you hit this little button, you open it like this. Uh, one of the things, and it's not a big deal anymore because it's basically uh, muscle memory to me now. But whenever you close, whenever you're trying to close this, you have to set your focus tap to infinity. Press the button to close it. It will physically not let you close it if it's not set to infinity so just remember that after a while you get the hang of it it's not a big deal uh, but the lens the lens is the reason why I bought this camera because I was tired of shooting <coughs> with this cheap plastic uh, uh, lens and I was tired of this camera eating up all my film because it wasn't getting the exposures right and you know it's got options to brighten or darken your pictures and turn off the flash or whatnot but uh, it just got really annoying to carry this big thing around so I wanted to upgrade so I got this because there's a glass uh, they're actually made out of glass but it's really not uh, there's three elements one of the elements being glass the other two being plastic so uh, the lens doesn't really have like a defining characteristic it's just whatever but the thing that disappointed me the most is shooting wide open so I bought it because I wanted to shoot medium format uh, style pictures where you get like the awesome fall off and whatnot you know shooting wide open but you can't really achieve that with this lens it, it just the pictures just come out really soft and I thought at first it was because I didn't know how to focus with the rangefinder and that's another thing I want to talk about the rangefinder it's not the greatest it's all made out of plastic and <clears throat> you don't really get a whole lot of confidence when you're using the rangefinder but I've worked around this I've used it so much that I already know how to use it so it's not that big of a deal but if it's a big deal for you, I don't know, that's something to look out for. I wanted to shoot wide open, and that's the whole reason why I bought these filters. Is because I wanted to, I was envisioning that I was going to be at some beach or something, and I was going to take some really awesome, like, shallow depth of field, medium format style uh, pictures by using these uh, ND filters, but <clears throat> I probably only used it, like, twice. I, I never use this thing, so I don't know if I recommend this to anybody. Uh, mainly because they're a pain in the ass uh, if you put it on if you screw it onto the lens and you want to close the camera you can't because it will physically not let you close it so it's kind of inconvenient to carry this box or wherever you put your filters in another thing too is I bought this lens hood because I thought I was going to be using it outside all the time and it does get some really nasty flares but I work around that by just putting my hand right there and sometimes you know I'll get my finger in the picture but you know there's instance that you look at the picture really quick and say oh dang my fingers in the way and then we retake it but yeah it is what it is so yeah I was really disappointed when I couldn't use the lens at you know wide open at 5.6 and you know I actually went uh, I got free film from Mint and that's something I'll talk about later I got free film from Mint and I decided to use that in a scientific uh, method uh, by putting this on a tripod and having a subject and I was trying my best to focus and I was you know Lip, moving the moving the focus tab ever so slightly to make sure uh, I was getting you know the perfect exposure or the perfect focus and I can never nail it and it comes and but I didn't know that it was because it was really soft and so I emailed Mint and they yeah they confirmed to me that it's not the rangefinder if it's actually the lens it's really soft when it's at 5.6 or even at 6.7 which is a really weird aperture to have but Anything above f point uh, f eight <coughs> and above, it's good. It's awesome. 
uh, the pictures are really sharp after uh, F8. And yeah, that's uh, when they come out sharp, they come out really sharp. It's really cool. Uh, another thing I don't like is the uh, electronics, the internals. Uh, for some reason, so if you want to put the camera on standby mode, you would collapse this and it would shut the, it would put it on standby mode. It doesn't always work. There's like a signal that's not uh, getting uh, uh, put through. You also have here in the uh, uh, shutter dial a off button, but again, it doesn't talk to the computer or something. The signal doesn't go through, I don't know what, but it sometimes leaves the LCD screen on or it leaves the camera on and it drains your battery. I've gone through a lot of batteries on this camera, but it's kind of cool that it takes double A batteries. So you can just find these batteries anywhere, but <clears throat> uh, I've found a way to work around this. Actually uh, get the battery and flip it the other way so that, you know, it's like um, both batteries are facing the same way. So the electronics aren't actually uh, connecting. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it seems to be working. My batteries aren't dying as fast. <clears throat> and whenever I do want to use it, I'll just go ahead and flip it. Uh, but whenever I do flip it, uh, it does restart the counter. So if I have film in here, I'm going to forget how much film I have in here. So that's one of the downsides, but eh, it is what it is. But <clears throat> with all that being said, I still think this is a great camera. Uh, the pictures that this camera produces are freaking amazing, especially when they're really sharp. Oh my God, they look amazing. They come out really awesome. And if you look at these pictures, like in a really awesome light, I mean, they're just gorgeous pictures. I also like that it's pretty portable. I mean, this is the collapse mode. It doesn't weigh a whole lot. And I think it's really beautiful looking too. I think it's really awesome looking. Like, I like the leather, it feels amazing. I could do without some of this plastic. It's really, you know, finicky, but Overall, I think it's a really awesome camera. So would I recommend this camera to anybody? Nah, uh, it's it's kind of hard to use if you don't know how to use a fully manual camera. If you don't know how to focus with a rangefinder, if you don't know anything about the shutter speeds and apertures, I would not recommend this camera. But if you do know your way around a fully manual camera, I would recommend this camera. Uh, if you like instant film, get it. If you like the Instax film, especially the Instax, the Instax wide, get it. If you know all three of those things, and you like all three of those things, go ahead and get it. Uh, if you're not a big fan of instant film, just because you know the quality isn't there, but you know, you're sacrificing convenience because you have an instant film, uh, but the quality isn't there, I, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend it. You're probably gonna be disappointed. Um, if you don't like the Instax film, you don't like the color chemistry, you don't like the format of it, I don't recommend it. If you find yourself, you're kind of in, you know, halfway in between, I would say go ahead and get it because uh, you're just gonna fall in love with this film. I think it's awesome. But I mean, at the end of the day, you're buying this camera because it's a fully manual camera and that's the way you wanna use it. Uh, I don't trust the light meter. Uh, I, don't, I don't ever use it on auto mode ever. So uh, if you're gonna buy this camera, just remember that this is gonna be a fully manual camera. Or at least that's how you should shoot it. That's how I think you should shoot it. There might be other opinions out there, but that's just my opinion. You are gonna have to use an external light meter and all that. You are gonna have to uh, think about the dynamic range of Instax. Uh, it doesn't have like the greatest dynamic range, but the good thing about this camera is that you can sacrifice, you know, the highlights or the shadows. Depends on how you like to shoot. I like to shoot overexposed by a little bit. Don't, you can't overexpose too much because then you lose a lot of that detail. Uh, but if you underexpose by a little bit and it's really dark, you lost all that information. There is nothing in there. So that's why I usually tend to overexpose. And that's why you'll see some of my pictures a little bit overexposed, but whenever I scan it, I can kind of get back some of that detail, which is really cool. Hopefully that was kind of helpful because I know whenever I was doing research, I didn't hear a lot of these things. so. I was a little disappointed when I got this camera, but I actually learned to love this camera and this camera is going to stay in my collection forever. All right, hopefully the electronics last years. Uh, I do have a five year warranty on it, but I don't think I'm ever going to send it off to man. Um, it's just the whole shipping hassle is to Hong Kong from here to the United States. Nah, no, I don't want to deal with that. So yeah, uh, the cool thing about Mint, the company, the company that makes this camera is uh, they actually give you free film. Um, and it is free uh, if you sell your soul. I'm just kidding. Um, no, but you do have to meet like a criteria in order to uh, get this free film. And it's all posted on their website. You can go check it out and you can see the list of the things that you have to do. But basically it's like, you have to post a picture 
that you took on this camera and you have to take a picture of the camera itself like together or something like that and you have to tag them and you have to get like a certain amount of likes and you have to have certain certain amount in a month and then they'll go ahead and ship you free film straight to your house which is really cool and i was doing that at first and that wasn't the reason why i got into this camera but it was a really nice like hey that's pretty cool to have and if i ever do want to get free film you know i can get it from them you know i, I just don't like that model you're actually acting like a uh an advertising for them which is cool but for me um that's not really me but that doesn't mean i don't like the company i actually really love the company i think they're really awesome i think they're doing some really amazing work uh producing this camera the other one the new one that just came out the one that takes uh it's basically this camera but it shoots the instax squares uh they have a bunch of other cameras they have a bunch of uh polaroid cameras that they refurbish and modify to take in the uh, 600 film and <clears throat> has a time machine which is a camera that i just actually bought the slr 670 and if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe because i will talk about that camera uh it is quickly becoming one of my favorite polaroid cameras of all time uh and i'm actually using it a little bit more than this one but i just got it so uh, i would I'll do another video like this where I rant and talk about what I like, what I don't like. So yeah, I'm done ranting. I uh, told you about the free film, told you how awesome Mint is, and uh, we should support them because um, we need more companies like this. We need uh, a company like this to make a awesome SLR Instax wide camera because if they do come out with that, I'll be the first in line to buy it. So anyways, uh, now we're in the middle. Uh, so I know I rant a lot and talk a lot of this, but hopefully that helps you out to figure out like if you really want to buy this camera. Uh, this is just like my opinion for you know owning this camera for you know almost a year, uh, and it's it's if you have any questions, go ahead and ask me in the comments. I'll try to answer them as honestly as I can. But um, yeah, it's a great camera. It's just got some ups and downs, just like any other camera. Now uh, I want to talk about. Uh, me walking around downtown Dallas actually using this camera and uh, I'm gonna talk about um, the uh, John F. Kennedy assassination not a whole lot but I, I just love this subject so I might go off but anyways so the first shot was actually me at the uh, it's actually me here at the Margaret Hill Bridge uh, this used, actually used to be like an active bridge and uh, I'm actually looking at the pictures right here in my hand I have them here and I'll display them uh, on the screen for you and uh, the audio it was really windy that day so I just gave up on the audio uh, even though it sounds okay but sometimes I like talk in these videos and I'm just ranting I don't even know what I'm saying so I think I'm gonna stick to this style where I shoot myself <laughs> where I shoot myself where I shoot a video of me taking a picture and then I come home and I'll talk about it. But anyways, yeah, this first shot, uh, I took a picture. I'm on the bridge. I'm taking a picture of another bridge, which is the bridge where you see the, uh, what would you call it? Like a suspension bridge? I don't know. It's a really unique looking bridge. I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> but behind that, you can see actually the Dallas skyline, which is really cool. This is a really cool place to go and hang out. Uh, it's like a real like a, it's, it's a park it's like a recreational park there's a lot of things to do and hang out and a lot of people go and take pictures there it's pretty cool <clears throat> this next picture uh, I don't know I just really like the colors and I wanted to test out what the colors I want so I wanted to take this picture so you guys can actually see the the range of the colors on this Instax film because uh, the colors on this are freaking amazing I did overexpose by a little bit, but that was a purpose, and uh, hopefully, if you're seeing this, and the, uh, I've already, you know, edited these pictures so you can see how great these colors can be, how vibrant they can be. <clears throat> so I was out in this park, uh, and so the whole purpose of me going out to Dallas that day is because I wanted to check out this park. So this is a brand new park that uh, just opened in Dallas. And uh, it's really nice. There's some things to do out there. It's a really small park. It took me like a minute to walk around this little square. Uh, and I wanted to take a picture of that building right behind, right here that you see. And I shot it landscape so I can get the whole building. 
but that building is actually pretty famous here in Dallas. It's the Bank of America building, it, or it's also known as the Green Building because it's got these neon these uh, neon lights that hang on the side of the building and they light up at night. And they also change colors depending on like what holiday it is or what you know what's going on. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool building. And I just remembered this guy that was out here hanging out, and he was actually trying to learn English. He had his phone out. And he had this app where it was like teaching them how to say some words in English, which is pretty cool. I just remembered about that. This next picture is a picture of the uh, dart uh, here in Dallas. And this is kind of a sketchy area, but I just wanted to take a picture of the dart. I just thought it was really cool looking, but yeah, it's all right. This next picture, I don't know what, I, I, it's one of those pictures where you just take and you're like, I thought I saw something, you look back at it and you're like, what the hell did I see? I want to say I was looking at this faded out text on the right, but I don't know, I don't know what caught my eye, maybe it was the reunion tower or the museum, I don't know, anyways. Uh, this picture, <clears throat> I didn't get a video, a video of myself taking a picture, but man this picture came out really awesome uh, even though on the right side everything is like there's no information there i really like how the brick the color of the brick comes out it just looks amazing and how sharp this picture is but like i said this is this is where instax film is hit or miss it, you know it doesn't have the dynamic range that you would expect from like you know regular film like kodak film it, it just does not have that range but I still think this is a great picture. All right, so this is another main reason why I came to here, uh, why I went to Dallas and I went to this spot right here. So this is actually the uh, <clears throat> the Dealey Plaza, and this is where uh, John F. Kennedy was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald, or at least that's what the uh, that's, or at least that's how the story goes. But if you in, in this picture, you actually see the uh, book repository that used to be a book repository now it's a museum that talks about the uh, JFK assassination uh, if you ever get the chance to go if you're in Dallas go ahead and check it out it's freaking awesome I love that place but if you look at this picture there's an X right here <coughs> and this is one of two X's there's another X I don't think you can see it in the picture but uh, right behind a little bit further back there's another X and that was the shot the first shot that Lee Harvey Oswald took that went through his throat or his chest or whatever and this x that you see right here in the in the in the very front is actually the shot that killed him and blew his brain out uh if you've ever seen the the video the Supruger, I, I don't know how to say it um the guy who actually was like filming with his uh, camera and he was right there and he actually got the video of his brain exploding out that was where the shot was when he was driving down the street so <clears throat> i don't know i just i really like i really like this it's, it's creepy it's it's weird and i'm a big fan of the whole john f kennedy assassination like i absolute absolutely love everything that deals with the jfk assassination i actually just read a book well not read but used audio an audio book <clears throat> through audible so i hope they can sponsor me um because i read a lot of their books or listen to a lot of their books uh, i just finished uh, 11 63 that is the title of the book it is a stephen king book that talks about jfk assassination and time travel so if you like time travel which i'm all about time travel third movie is back to the future uh <clears throat> you're gonna love this book it is freaking awesome and it's also really cool because um, it talks about JFK and this guy going back in time here in Texas. And it's really cool because in the book, um, Stephen King really did a lot of research. Like he got down a lot of little things that only like people here in DSW would know. Or like something like he got some streets. He got like what it was like back in the days, how people were back in the days. Uh, he even, I'm, I'm sure he made up this town, uh, <clears throat> but that town sounds like 
a town that I have heard of before, like back in the day. But anyways, he just did an awesome job and it's Stephen King, so it's really messed up. And they actually made this book into a series that's out on Hulu and it has uh, James Franco in it. So go check it out. If, if you don't want to read it, go watch the, the series. It's really, really awesome. It's really good. It, it's not the same as a book, but uh, if you have time to listen or read the book, read it. You're going to love it, especially if you love time travel, especially if you love uh, the, JF the whole JFK assassination thing. I've heard a lot of stories, a lot of conspiracies. I go there all the time. Anytime any any of my friends from California or anywhere come, I take them there. Or family that comes, I'll take them there. <clears throat> I've, I've heard it all. And I'm really fascinated by it. So, yeah, I love going there. Any any excuse to go down there and check out that, that whole area, I'm down. Let's go. <laughs> so, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I uh, hope you liked it. I hope you liked my little rant in the beginning. And I hope you like me talking about these pictures. And yeah, uh, like I said, I am gonna talk about uh, the SLR 670 by Mint. And I am gonna make more videos with this camera because I absolutely love this camera. And if you see, if you want to see more of my stuff, I do have a lot of this stuff on my Instagram. So go check out my Instagram, uh, follow me, and you know, if you're gonna follow me say something like say hey what's up where you're from and i like to meet people it's really cool especially people from you know outside of texas uh so if i ever do go out there i'll ask you like hey what's cool to check out so yeah add me let me know what's cool in your city and i'll go check it out i love little things like little dumb things or even super touristy things i don't care i'll go check it out anyways you guys uh have a good day i'll see you guys later